Well, I mean, you know, sometimes kids seem to have an increased heart rate and maybe sweat and they can't concentrate and they go to the pediatrician and he sends them to not a cardiologist but an endocrinologist. Does that make sense to you? The symptoms, Dr. Kaplow, that you were just referring to are typical symptoms seen in children who have hyperthyroidism or elevated thyroid hormone levels in the body. This is a fairly common condition and would account for a rapid beating of the heart in the chest or as sometimes children tend to refer to butterflies in the chest. However, in almost all children, perhaps 99.9 percent .9 of them, if they in fact have overproduction of thyroid hormone and those symptoms, they will have a swelling of the thyroid gland in the neck called a goiter. And if the child does not have a goiter, it's not likely to be due to the thyroid. Therefore, when a child complains of a rapid heartbeat, a simple examination by the primary care provider and pediatrician should be able to detect a goiter. And if a goiter is present, then most likely what we're dealing with is a thyroid abnormality where the thyroid gland is producing for reasons that are not entirely clear too much thyroid hormone causing symptoms of rapid heartbeat, sometimes muscle fatigue, and children will have difficulty, for example, climbing stairs or getting up from a squatting position, weight loss that's unintended, and a feeling perhaps of restlessness, anxiety, and feeling hot when everybody else may be feeling cold. How is this treated if you do have this diagnosis? There are three main methods of treatment of an overactive thyroid gland called Graves' disease. The first, and the one that we least prefer, is surgical removal of the thyroid gland. Here, a surgeon would make a small incision in the neck and remove the thyroid gland. The reason that this is not favored is due to the fact that there are many vital structures in the neck that course through and around the thyroid gland, including important nerves and blood vessels. And since the other two treatments are much more acceptable and less fraught with complications, we prefer them. The next and the uh, second most favored treatment is the treatment with pills. These pills will suppress the ability of the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone, and in doing so, reduce the levels of thyroid hormone in the body. Typically, Children are treated with these pills for a period of about two years, after which time, if the thyroid gland reverts back to its normal function, the child is cured. Unfortunately, this occurs in only a small minority of patients, perhaps 30 to 35 percent, and the rest need to go on to what we consider to be the most favored approach, which is destruction of the thyroid gland using radioactive iodine. Now, we live in times where radioactivity is something that's frightening to most people, but it's important to remember that a very small dose of radioactive iodine is given to the child to drink, either in pill form or liquid. That radioactive iodine is absorbed very quickly by the thyroid gland, and the thyroid gland painlessly is destroyed by the radioactive iodine over a period of six to nine weeks at which point the thyroid gland is no longer capable of making thyroid hormone. In essence, we trade the condition of overactive thyroid disease to create an underactive thyroid gland and then replace the thyroid hormone with thyroid hormone in pill form. And once children are on a stable dose of thyroid hormone by pill form, their care can be fairly uh, light in the sense that they need to be seen uh, no more than perhaps once or twice a year by the pediatric endocrinologist. So in other words, you trade a difficultly treat problem to a rather easy treated problem, is that correct? Exactly. Treatment of overactive thyroid gland is much more tricky than treating an underactive thyroid gland. Much more close monitoring of the side effects of the pills has to be done and many more changes in the pills have to be done periodically in order to maintain the thyroid hormone levels at a normal range. Also, there is a small risk of side effects associated with taking the pills, another reason why we favor radioactive iodine as our mainstay of treatment.